when Amazon began raining down all of these splits on us, one of the biggest things that happened was that many of us had to adapt in order to avoid all of these splits that were occurring. Many of us were experiencing eight, Legion! 10, Inconceivable. even upwards of 15 different splits on relatively small shipments. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and update for you what my current workflow is, and hopefully it'll help you to not only avoid the splits, but make the splits that you do receive a little more bearable. My name is Manny, and this is Manny's Book Bag. Hello everybody, it's Manny and I'm back with another video. I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that uh, winter wasn't too harsh for you and you're building your inventory back up and getting ready for these textbook seasons. I wanted to make this video as an update for what my workflow within Accelerlist looks like now. When I first made that live workflow, uh, bear in mind that was months ago before the splits were uh, actually hitting us really hard. So it was fairly reliable to be able to list in live mode and you wouldn't be split very much and there was very little need for all of the adaptation that we all had to do the last few months. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to list about 50 books and I'm going to make this small shipment. Uh, just so that I can show you what I do. Now, I no longer list in live mode. If you do list in live mode, Accelerlist has a couple of really cool tools in there that you can use, including the holding area. Uh, if you are not sure what the holding area is, uh, you should take a look at it, give it a shot in live mode. You can actually reject the shipment plans and instead of just rejecting it, you can save the listing data so you don't have to re-enter it later by hitting uh, save to the holding area. And the theory behind this is that you don't accept any split shipments at all you determine which is your main warehouse and then all you have to do is you, you can go back in there and you can accept the units that were going to that warehouse and once you've got that one warehouse going you load that warehouse up with all of the units that amazon wants you to send there if anything doesn't want to go there reject the plan and send that listing data to the holding area what you can then do is you can go back later, whether it's that night or the next morning, and your items should still be in that holding area, and you can try to relist them. A lot of times, it's just a matter of the timing of it, and the next day, some of those items will go into that shipment that you have open. It's a great way, particularly if you don't have a lot of different units, to get as many units as possible into that shipment. But if you list a larger number of units at a time like I do, that could actually become a little bit unwieldy and take a little too long to get shipments out the door. And that's exactly why my current workflow revolves around private listing and bulk listing. My favorite way to list is using bulk listing mode because you can list your items as quickly as you can scan them and you don't have that three to five second lag in between each listing waiting for the label to print out. I'm sure that many of you could appreciate that considering that you've been having some pretty lengthy d delays in between listings waiting on your labels. Now, even though bulk listing is my favorite way to list, I find that a lot of the time I have to list in private mode because bulk listing has the limitation of about 200 units that you can list at a time. There is no such limitation in private mode. And since I find it faster to just go ahead and list everything in one shot, Get her done and worry about it later, I tend to use private mode. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna list 50 books. I'm gonna list them using private mode. I use uh, the speed variant of that, which means I do not set the prices as I, as I go. Uh, I know that most of you are going to print the label after each listing, so I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. There's a couple of different ways that you can go about printing your items. You can choose to have Accelerlist print the label after each listing, or you can go into your settings and disable the print after list option. I disable the print after the list option for one very specific reason, and splits are that reason. 
When splits happen in private mode, they're not going to happen after the batch is completed, everything is labeled, and you're ready to go. So if you have three to four different shipments that you have to split your batch into, you can very easily make a mistake if you're not careful and you're not organized. My workaround for this is to not print the labels as I go, complete the batch, allow the shipments to split, and then once the shipments split, now you can set to print your labels and label everything. Now you can print your labels by shipment through Seller Central a couple of different ways. The first and the most common way, many of us began this way, was to print 30 label sheets. You can do that uh, by shipment and you can use those labels to label and at the same time separate your shipments so that you don't make any mistakes. If you have any leftover labels at all, then you know that's a red flag and you're missing an item for that shipment. There are also some extensions out there that can help you get the labels printed such as Click and Label. You can actually also use the Accelerlist Chrome extension and print item labels through Seller Central using that as well. Now, I haven't gotten around to using the Accelerlist Chrome extension uh, for the purposes of printing FNSKU labels. So if you have, put in the comments below and let us know how it's working out, if, if the app works, if it's making life easy for you. But that's what I do. It keeps things simple in that the labels that print out are all gonna be labels for that specific shipment. So as you're going through your items, not only are you labeling them, you're also separating the shipment in a way that guarantees you're not going to make a mistake. One last warning before I get started. The way that I list requires really good organization and you have to keep everything stacked and organized in the exact same order that you list it. If you don't do that, you might have a really confused mess on your hands. And obviously it goes without saying, I'm just kind of sharing my process. You can take little bits of pieces. You can tell yourself, wow, I really like that idea. I want to try that out. Or you can say, I don't know what this guy's doing. That looks ridiculous. I don't want to do that ever. Whatever the case may be, this video is just really a demonstration that hopefully can show you that there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. There's a lot of different ways, as a matter of fact, and there are also a lot of benefits to listing in bulk or private mode as far as uh, helping you to avoid quite so many splits. So instead of getting eight or 10 splits, you may only experience two, three, or four. I'll take that any day of the week over having to uh, delete shipments. Deleting a shipment here or there is no big deal. Amazon recognizes that mistakes happen, which is why we don't get flagged after a couple of deletions. If deleting shipment after shipment is a way of life for you, then it's very possible, as a lot of other sellers have reported on the Facebook groups, that you could eventually receive an email from Amazon shutting you down and taking away your shipping privileges for seven to 10 days. That doesn't sound like fun and nothing I wanna be doing. But enough of that, let's get over to the screen so I can show you one of the important things about initially creating the batch in the first Alrighty, place. Alrighty folks, and here we are. I wanted to bring you to the screen really quickly because for our purposes, when we first create a brand new batch, it is super important that we pay very close attention to these particular presets. There's a lot of questions in the Accelerlist group all the time. There's questions such as, can I use uh, 2D barcodes? Why doesn't Amazon allow me to change the grayed out box for multiple boxes in Seller Central? All of these questions arise because we just follow the defaults here instead of using the correct setting for what it is we are trying to accomplish. So let me just walk you through these really quickly. First things first, you have to set a batch name. It doesn't matter what it is. You can just put in whatever. You can actually use it to organize the number of shipments you send in per month. You can do whatever you want with that batch name, whatever makes sense for you. Uh, the next setting has to do with custom SKU templates. You can choose to use it, you can choose not to use it, or you can choose to update it as you go. Uh, when I do use it, I use it and I update it because I have to follow a very specific pattern for my SKU based on what my repricing settings require. Uh, you make sure if you have multiple addresses, you make sure you've got that squared away and you have that all correct. 
uh, you're also going to want to make sure that you've got the correct channel of your listing FBA uh, versus Merchant Fulfilled. Make sure this is correct here. Your workflows, for example, will also be determined by these presets here. The default is live mode. If you list in live mode, make sure that that is what you've got here. If you don't want to list in live mode, you do have to change it between private or bulk. But one more note about live mode, if you do choose to list in live mode, make sure that you, the merchant, are labeling if you want to do that, or also make sure that you are selecting Amazon to label for you if that's what you wish to do. Uh, but the last note about live mode has to do with this, uh, the box content submission uh, method that you're choosing. The default is the API method. What you're telling Acceler List is that you're not only are you going to list in live mode, but that you are going to sort the contents of the boxes out as you go, so that when you submit the batch, Amazon is going to receive that all electronically. Be very careful because most of us, I believe, use 2D barcodes. And if you do not select 2D barcodes, you're going to be stuck in a situation where you sent something to Amazon that Amazon never really needed to see. So if you're listing in live mode and you're going to attach 2D barcodes to the box, make sure that you change that setting there. But for our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this to private mode so that we can list according to the workflow that I follow now. And you're going to notice that that disables any and all box contents as we list. So let's go ahead and create our batch. So there you go. Once your batch is created, then you're ready to start listing. What I like to do is when I get into the batch, I want to make sure at the header there, it says that I am in private mode. It says that I am switched over to speed mode and that it shows merchant as being responsible for labeling the product. Once I verified that I'm in the right spot, I make sure that in my presets, I pick the correct condition, my buy cost is accurate, and I choose the correct condition note snippet. Now I'm listing books, so I've already conditioned them, I've graded them, and I have them stacked. I have them stacked with the barcodes facing up, and I'm going to go ahead and print the labels as I go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list about 12 to 15 at a time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to label 12 to 15 at a time after they're listed. I don't label each item as I go. I go ahead and I keep them in the exact same order as I list them so I can just flip them over, label them, put them down and keep them stacked and move on to the next stack. Ideally, I want to keep the stacks kind of manageable, so I keep it to about 12 to 15 on books. When I'm listing CDs, obviously the stacks are much bigger. My stacks are going to be 30 to 40 high. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start listing. Uh, one last reminder, it is super important to make sure that when you get to the point where you're listing, you are organized enough where everything else that has to be done as far as prepping, if you choose to remove labels, things like that, that's all finished and done already. Right now we're just focused on listing and making sure that it's going into the batch correctly. So let's get started. It's also very nice to know that I am not experiencing the lag that a lot of other sellers have reported 20, 25 seconds. That's actually encouraging because it's going to make the process go a lot faster. Nothing's going to slow you down faster than having issues with your Dymo. So I'm going to reach behind me and I'm going to grab the good condition books and start working on all of that. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me do this. I'm going to speed this part up for you. And this, by the way, is one of the really big joys of listing as you go using speed mode.
and there it is. I'm all done. I listed 50 books. It took me 17 real time minutes and that's with one or two lookups and one or two items not found. So that part is very quick. I now have 50 books in this batch. They're all labeled. And if you saw me flipping them back, I put, I made sure that these stacks are in the exact same order that they were listed. So now I'm going to go ahead and complete this batch and cross our fingers. If I list 50 exactly, hopefully I won't get split. Let's see what happens. And here we are folks. As you can see, I have submitted the batch. Uh, the batch has made its way to Amazon seller central and I was not split. All 50 units are part of that batch. And I'm thankful because I wanted to illustrate this to you. I'm, I'm sure I've, I've said this a few times, but when you list exactly 50 or 100, or should I say when I list exactly 50 or 100, the probability is really high that Amazon does not split me at all. As you can see here, uh, the 50 units were all sent together. Uh, they're definitely over 50 pounds. I will still use box contents to split up into a second box of maybe 8 to 10 books, but they will all go to one location and there will be no need to handle split shipments. I, I should also remind all of you that Accelerlist now has a box content feature uh, built into the list menu. I created a video on the box content feature and it is one of the videos that I'm going to go ahead and link into the YouTube card for you. Make sure you take a look at it because it really is a very useful tool and prevents you from having to find another source for box contents or having to use the web form that I know a lot of you don't like. But here's the question of the day, which is your preferred method for listing and what are some of the steps that you've taken to adapt to the constant fear of splits? Go ahead and put in your comments below because I think it's something that we could all really learn from. Well that's all for today's video folks. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't liked this video yet, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and tap on that book bag. And while you're in there, make sure you tap on that bell, turn on those bell notifications so that you don't miss any new videos when they get posted. Until next time, let's go make some money.